Okay, so it's 11 o'clock, we start again. And again, it is my great honor and pleasure to introduce another friend and colleague from University of Warsaw, uh, Jacek Mienkisz. So maybe you can see the pattern here. May I ask you to be quiet, please? Excuse me. Excuse me, we all just started. Could you please take your seats and at least stop talking? Okay, uh, yeah, we really have to do something about it. You, you, you cannot enter after the beginning of a lecture and make noise, please. I mean, have some respect. Um, all right, so let's start again. Uh, you, you could see the pattern here. Uh, yesterday was the day of Wrocław. Speakers were mostly from Wrocław. Today is the day of Warsaw. Uh, we have another speaker from Warsaw, and our third speaker, Pavel Dwotka, will also be from Warsaw. However, uh, all this said, uh, Jacek, very much like me, his hometown is Wrocław. We were born in Wrocław and we studied in Wrocław. So he, he got his master's degree from uh, Wrocław Polytechnic. And uh, he is an applied physicist. And uh, I will not be able to repeat from my memory what he is dealing with, but uh, it's short. Uh, let me read it out. He studies systems of interacting objects, spins, and particles in statistical physics players in evolutionary game theory and protein molecules and signaling pathways in living cells. He constructed a counterexample to the dubrosian schlossmann hypothesis, a classical lattice gas model with finite range interactions and with a unique periodic ground state configuration, which is unstable at arbitrarily low temperatures, but is not in the support of any low temperature Gibbs state. So that's a very succinct description of his main research interests. Um, now, today, he'll tell us about mathematical physics of quasi crystals. Jacek, we are all ears. Take it away. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for the invitation and a uh, nice introduction. Uh, my talk will be somewhat uh, similar to the previous one. I will begin with uh, motivation, uh, open problems, questions, uh, usually phrased uh, in a very uh, imprecise way from a mathematical uh, point of view. And it is our uh, goal in applied mathematics here uh, in mathematical physics uh, to make them precise, uh, to change uh, them into mathematical uh, objects. And uh, so, and the definitions, uh, theorems uh, follow later as uh, in my uh, presentation. Uh, so I guess uh, after this introduction uh, of Piotr, uh, I guess my goal is uh, to uh, make it understandable uh, what, was, uh, uh, what, what was said, uh, what was my uh, <laughs> interest. Mm -hmm. uh, and actually, uh, uh, I was dealing with this uh, mathematical physics of quasi crystals in, in my youth. And then I changed uh, into the game theory, evolutionary game theory, and, uh, and um, stochastic processes in living cells. And now it is my way of reversing the arrow of time to come back to the problems of my youth. Okay, so that's uh, advice, uh, maybe some some of you know, uh, uh, senior uh, uh, people to do so. It, it is really nice. Uh, and to discover that many uh, important open problems are still open. Uh, so we are waiting for you uh, in, in particular. Uh, so let me, uh, my slides are already uh, sent uh, to you, uh, probably. And for Zoom, for Zoom, uh, uh, I think these uh, they are uh, posted on I my web page. The link, but well, that's the same. To your web page is yeah, the, that's what it is nowadays. Links, yeah, links. Uh, anyway, all slides will be posted at the final. Yes, in the comments. Oh, they are already uh, posted on my web page, and you can uh, Google my web page uh, easily. But it will be posted. Sure. Uh, so let me uh, uh, then uh, begin. If I can, <laughs> it worked, but now it doesn't. Uh, I don't know why. I made. I made. The, yeah, I don't touch it. It was working at the beginning. Uh, it, it shows that I'm. Uh, if I'm, this is a theoretical one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and how about? Maybe, uh, maybe you should switch. Uh, well. And maybe you can switch off the, off the side. I don't know. Okay. 
Yes, it works here, but now it works. Okay. All right. So it's a, okay. Thank you very much. So <clears throat> let me begin uh, with a short uh, but strongly biased uh, history of non periodicity. Uh, it all began with uh, David Hilbert uh, in 1900. Uh, he posed uh, uh, 23 uh, famous uh, uh, problems. And the second part of the problem 18 can be phrased in the following way. Does there exist a polyhedron which can cover the space, but only in a non-periodic way? So here we have uh, two statements. Uh, first of all, we can cover the space having infinitely many copies of a polyhedron. Uh, uh, to cover means uh, uh, without leaving empty uh, uh, spaces and without overlaps. And the second part of it is that we can do it only in a non-periodic way. So I, I guess we understand what it means periodic, that there is no non-trivial shift uh, of the cover such that it will coincide with, its, with itself. Uh, well, obviously, if you have a cube, infinitely many numbers, number of, 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 of copies, you can cover uh, the space uh, in a nice, a cubic way to make a cubic uh, regular lattice, uh, but also in many non-periodic ways. You can easily imagine that you're just shifting uh, columns or rows of, of these cubes. Okay? So the point is here uh, that should be only non-periodic way uh, of, uh, of making the cover of the uh, three-dimensional space question. Mm -hmm. Let's complicate it. Uh, so that's the question from Parkinson. So do you assume that there is only one type of point like that? We cannot mix different types of points like that. One. Only one. Only one. That's the original uh, uh, Hilbert. Uh, uh, yes. A. Yes. One. Uh, uh, in three dimension, it is essentially solved, but not quite. I don't want to discuss this. In two dimensions, that is, is cover the plane. It's still it's still open. Okay, so you can start to work on it right now. Uh, and the span of time, this is two different. Yes, slides. yes. Well, this is, these are five five slides ahead. We use it in a Okay. Uh, the, the logician Hao Wang uh, took up the problem. Uh, uh, his uh, uh, and. Uh, um, for domino players. Uh, so we have bank ties, which are essentially squares uh, with some uh, colors on sides. And like in dominoes, uh, you have to match uh, the, the squares uh, together such that the colors of, uh, of sides, which are uh, just, will be, will be the same. Okay? And uh, uh, his uh, hypothesis uh, goes uh, contrary to Hilbert. Uh, 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 and it states uh, each finite set of dominoes, prototiles, proto, proto dominoes, which covers the plane, may also cover it in a periodic way. So it's, 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 the, it's, the, it's, the, it's the other direction. And the motivation is uh, from, uh, say, computer science, uh, the suitability uh, question. Uh, we'd like to have a, a computer program which decides you have a, a say finite number of, of these dominoes and of course infinite number of copies of them and we like to tile the plane and uh, do you have a computer program which will stop after finite time the time and if uh, if every every cover uh, uh, will allow uh, uh, I mean periodic one so after finite number of steps or, or time you will discover the period. And the, and, the com and the computer stops. Okay. Uh, and uh, if, the, if the hypothesis is not correct, then the, the you have problems. Okay. And, uh, and, uh, and, do, and you have. <laughs> and you have. Uh, so the Vank hypothesis uh, is, is incorrect. And one of the first uh, counterexamples is you, Raphael Robinson. Uh, uh, he constructed, or discovered, if you wish, uh, uh, 50. It, actually six tiles, but if you allow rotations and, and reflections, you have 56 of them, uh, which uh, cover plane, but only in a non-periodic way. So let, let's see that the, the S in, uh, the, the, these are uh, uh, Vank tiles, now they're called Vank tiles, square likes, square like tiles with some notches and dents on sides. And if you put uh, 
ties together, you like to put ties together, the notches, the dents and the notches should, should match, okay, in, in, in an obvious uh, way. And centers of squares in a perfect tiling will form the perfect Z2 lattice, periodic one. So what is non-periodic here is the assignment of uh, uh, tiles uh, to the vertices of, this, of the square lattice. Mm -hmm. And let me describe very briefly uh, the structure of the uh, non-periodic uh, 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 Robinson uh, tiling. And uh, uh, if you look at the tile uh, uh, at the bottom uh, left, uh, call it a hoop. And we'll just look uh, at, the, at the positions uh, uh, of, of the hook. Okay, so uh, let's see. Okay. Uh, you see the, 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 the part of the Z2 lattice, and let's say that this upper left hook is placed here, and then you have to place all other hooks on the every second uh, uh, lattice side, so here is still empty space, but there will be a, a, a tile there. Uh, this tile forces uh, the uh, hook here to be oriented in this way. Okay, and all other hooks on this sub lattice will form, you see the perfect periodic tiling, this perfect periodic tiling, but still some lattice sites are not occupied. Okay, and then the situation uh, uh, repeats. Uh, okay, you put the uh, hook right here in this particular orientation, and then once you do this, every uh, center of this, uh, uh, of, of these squares should be uh, should be uh, filled with the hook uh, with hooks which will form the same pattern and on this uh, larger scale mm -hmm. and it repeats and repeats so you see another hook here i uh, will force three others here and then in the begin in the middle you have this one and this uh, procedure uh, uh, continues at infinitum uh, uh, providing the non-periodic uh, uh, non uh, tiling. So you have configurations, if you'd like to see this, we have configurations with period two to the n plus one on sub lattices, two to the n, z to the uh, z square. Okay. And uh, well, that's, that's, uh, that's very amazing because uh, we see the global non-periodic order, which is forced, but only, uh, Nearest neighbor, maybe on the diagonal also, but uh, finite, uh, finite uh, uh, neighbor interactions. Let's say nearest neighbor matching rules. So nearest neighbor matching rules force non-periodic uh, global order. So the, uh, the 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 information should flow somehow, and this is exactly in the uh, description in, in the proof of the Robinson how it how it flows. The information should flow over uh, arbitrary long distances to tell this hook somewhere there to be oriented in a specific way. Okay, so this infinite uh, uh, flow of information on the structure. So uh, of course, immediately the questions uh, arise, how stable it is, you know? Because if, if information should flow over the infinite or well, arbitrary long distances, uh, it would be, well, I might think, yes, uh, easily destroy, destroy, okay? And that's exactly the content of my of my talk uh, uh, and actually the main major problems will involve the stability of this uh, information flow that is to say the stability of non-periodic structures uh, which come from uh, local uh, interactions or local uh, matching rules uh, observe also uh, which is a general uh, remark that if you have a, a, a non-periodic structure like this uh, how, how many do you have using the same tiles, using the same prototypes? How many? Question. How many do you have? Well, uh, the proof is at least one, yes. I mean, that's, that's, uh, 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 and should not be uh, periodic ones, yes. That's, that's, the, that's, the, uh, that's the game here. But how many non periodic ones? Huh? Well, uh, 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 good enough, but not quite. Huh? Uh, if, if you ask mathematics how many, 
Sorry. Uh, if you ask, uh, okay. Uh, if you ask in mathematics, how many, uh, you know, the answer may be more uh, elaborate. Infinitely many is quite nice. Any other ideas? Uh, uncountable. Oh, uncountable, men, uncountable. Men. And, and here is uh, actually the proof is here already outlined. You see, on every sub lattice, on every sub lattice, you have the uh, choice of four orientations. The choice of four orientations. Yes, and you have uh, infinitely many sub lattices. So naturally, uh, you immediately it follows that there are uncountably many uh, tilings. Uh, involved, uh, uh, which involved this this this, uh, this particular uh, six or fifty six, if you prefer, um, Robinson uh, times. Uh, there will be also another way of looking at it from the sort of measure uh, uh, theory point of view. Why non-periodic structure should be al always uh, the number of non-periodic structures should be always uh, should be always uh, uncountable. Uh, so so. Uh, uh, for, for a moment, there was a sort of a, a struggle uh, to come down from, you know, this is 56 here. Uh, Hilbert demands one, okay? So it's a plenty of room and there was sort of a competition how to lower this. Uh, eventually, if I remember, it's 11 uh, prototiles and that's it. If you have prototiles, if you can cover the space, you can all, also cover, you can also can cover it in a, a periodic way. Uh, well, okay, Roger Penrose, yes, of course. Uh, or I was already mentioned, uh, in, in fact, twice. Uh, uh, that, uh, I mean, he, he, he's known uh, basically for differential geometry and uh, cosmology and uh, things like that, but that was his, uh, you know, like a hobby. Uh, okay, uh, but this, 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 that was sort of, of, of his hobby. And uh, he designed uh, uh, two tiles very close to, to the Hilbert uh, original uh, demand. Uh, they're called dart and kite or romps, rhombi with uh, specific uh, colorings and notches and dents, of course, uh, such that, again, uh, you can cover uh, the plane only in a non-periodic way using these uh, two uh, shapes, either either the dart and kite and, and rhombi, and of course, there are many other uh, graphical and nice <laughs> Uh, from aesthetic point of view, representations of these uh, two uh, tiles. Um, May I interject for a second about the applications of these uh, periodic tiles? Sure. This used to be a famous story in Britain uh, because Roger got a patent for this invention, and there was some American cosmetics company producing toilet paper. Yeah. And they used his periodic tiling because it's important to have a roll of toilet paper that the tiling is periodic and some nice hat and so on. If it's periodic, you can run into problems when you wind it up. And they sued the American company if they want because they legally use dark and kites in the toilet paper. Yeah. But so I this is a flag mathematics. Yeah. But I, I think if I may, so if I may to comment on this, uh, I, I see a problem with, with your statement and the statement of this of this uh, pattern. Because the toilet paper is essentially one dimensional. Yes. 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 And then the, if it do not work, I will talk about in one dimension, right? So if you have one dimensional toilet paper, I yeah. uh, okay. <laughs> so, so it should, should repeat that. It should, it should repeat. So then it's, it's a, in a sense, it's a bad example, yes? Uh, because it's, it's really okay. worse. It's a true story. I mean, I, I, I mean true stories are wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so uh, yes, uh, actually, I, I made uh, I made uh, uh, a floor of of uh, not of the bathroom, but of this small small piece in our, our apartment uh, with with the, with the uh, actually uh, uh, Robinson tilings. But this was finite. So again, yeah, uh, actually, the guy who was doing this made a mistake, and I. Uh, but he he was quite he was involved with this. We, we discussed things, so I asked him just you know to remove. This one tile because it was wrong, and he, he did it uh, without any extra cost. Uh, <laughs> the payment was the, the my exposition of what's the mathematics uh, behind it. Uh, all right, so uh, that's 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 Roger Penrose. Well, you, you see the she, uh, yeah. I think if, if you pause for a moment, then it's uh, 
uh, can manage. Uh, uh, Penrose tidings, of course, uh, 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 different, uh, different, uh, different, nice uh, visualizations. Uh, it, 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 they will play a role in a moment, uh, but now we we go to physics, uh, as expected. Uh, the crystal problem, the old one. Uh, let, let me phrase the crystal problem within the uh, fundamental law of physics. So uh, what, what is the fundamental law of physics? What is the fundamental law of physics? The one, the one. Huh? Yeah, it's a very particular one. It's gold, but it should be one which you now is, is a right amount of gold. It's all possible, uh, uh, you know, philosophical uh, statements uh, which are issued in physics. Uh, so, 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 my uh, my uh, uh, idea is that the nature is lazy. Okay. Huh? Yeah. Uh, what it means? Uh, it means that you can phrase uh, every uh, problem, uh, I mean, every law in physics uh, in terms of uh, optimization, okay, or variation of variation of problem. Right? Uh, there's a simple phrasing of, of, of many physical laws, which is the cause uh, and effort, okay? like Newton's law. Yeah? But Newton's laws, uh, so differential equations, can be, uh, can be seen as, as a solution of some uh, this action principle or some other variation of a problem. You don't see really cause and effect, you see that something should be optimized, or usually minimized. Let's say. If, you minimize, if you minimize something, you're, you're basically lazy. Yes, and here, uh, here in this uh, particular, I guess, this, yeah, uh, in this uh, particular case, uh, we are talking about system of many interacting particles, okay? uh, matter, okay, uh, it consists of many interacting atoms, uh, molecules. Uh, you have uh, many interacting particles, and this principle, this principle says that uh, 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 in equilibrium, I'm talking about equilibrium. No. Of course, we are not in, in equilibrium. Hopefully, uh, then uh, uh, you have to minimize the free energy. Okay. Well, think about it as an energy for a moment. We'll talk about this in a moment. Uh, the free energy is the energy minus the temperature times the, the entropy. It's called the free energy. It should, it should be minimized at the zero temperature. And we'll talk about zero temperature. Uh, you have the energy, so you 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 should minimize the energy. And and such states, such configurations of many uh, particles, uh, they are called ground state configurations. Ground state configuration. You're just lying on the floor, basically, or something like that. Um, are in the ground state, yes, and and all matter and, and all matter uh, uh, would like to have to be in a ground state, you know, just to dissipate out and give out the energy and just lie down on the floor. And uh, that these are uh, now the crystal problem is assumed for ages that at uh, sufficiently low temperature and, and, and pressure, high pressure, enough pressure, everything is crystal. Everything is crystal. Okay, so. We lower the temperature here, and so we will be all crystalline. Uh, that's 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 the assumption in all solid state physics in the first page, okay? And there are classification of the Bravais lattices or all other uh, periodic lattices which have a certain uh, symmetries, but that's the dogma. At least used to be a dogma. Yes, everything is. Uh, we are a, a collection of atoms. We believe, yeah. uh, and if you if, if we lower the temperature oh. here, if you lower the temperature at sufficiently low temperature, and maybe you just put a little bit pressure, also just to squeeze it, then uh, everything will be crystalline. Everything will be crystalline. So all matter at low temperature should be crystalline. Question? Yes, because as far as I remember, helium. Is a liquid in zero Kelvin temperature. Uh, and well, maybe the, you put some pressure down. Yes, one of the conditions for helium to be uh, crystallized. Okay, so uh, of course you call it into quantum. Uh, yes, so what, what I'm talking about uh, is essentially a, a, a classical uh, physics, but uh, uh, I think that sh it should apply to helium as well. I, I'm not sure, but uh, if you put a, a, a Strong pressure, but uh, I, I don't want to discuss it right now uh, further because these are quant quantum effects. Yes, 
for the specific quantum uh, liquids. But, but I think it's, it's, it's universal. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, so, uh, so the question is again, uh, just just keep uh, the uh, uh, classical, not quantum uh, point of view here. And uh, we uh, introduced uh, some realistic uh, interactions like Leonard Jones, two body interactions. And of course, Leonard Jones has a minimum here. So if you have two particles, of course, the minimum will be you know, at that uh, distance, uh, whatever where is the minimum but you have many you cannot satisfy all <laughs> minima yes at the same time there's a frustration because of frustration yes uh, and then uh, and nevertheless you like to have uh, that uh, you'd like to see the the salt uh, the crystal of the salt kitchen yes like here in the cubic lattice or actually this face uh, center uh, cubic lattice with natrium and uh, uh, and fluoride, yes. Sorry, sure. Uh, to the left. This one. Uh, okay. So uh, uh, we uh, introduce interactions between uh, two objects, particles or molecules, and this is the uh, uh, energy, okay, of two uh, molecules at the distance at the, at some distance arc. So on on the uh, Horizontal axis, there's a distance, uh, and on the vertical axis, uh, there's the energy. It's a, it's a, a, a Leonard Jones, uh, well, so like a prototype uh, interactions in molecular molecular systems. Uh, so it 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 is it, it is repel it is positive at sh short distances. It repels, okay, and uh, and it attracts uh, uh, because it's negative at the at the, at the uh, large distance. There is a minimum. Okay, there's a minimum. And again, we'd like to be at the minimum, as I said, yes? Uh, so if you have two particles, of course, it will be at the minimum. But if you have many, you cannot satisfy all the minima at the same time. Obviously, yes, because there are many in, in uh, let's say, R2 space, and you, you cannot have all of them uh, <laughs> unless, uh, uh, right? It's impossible, yes? But nevertheless, we think, oh, well, I think that was the dogma that uh, we'll have a crystal like this one for the salt kitchen, okay? At the, Again, sufficiently low temperature and sufficiently uh, high pressure. Sorry, Sorry. 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 I don't understand this. Uh, the challenge between uh, two uh, adapters, uh, the no, no. Uh, the adjacent. No, 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 adjacent. There is no anything like adjacent here. It's just uh, two molecules. So it's like, uh, uh, like uh, two molecules. This is two body interactions. It's a two body interaction. And if you have two objects, two molecules at a distance, R, then this F of R, which is on the vertical axis, tells you what is the energy, what is the energy, uh, the potential, if you will, uh, of, of these two uh, molecules at, at a certain distance. Yes, so this is a, this is a, well, this is a, this is a Hamiltonian. What I describe is a Hamiltonian uh, of, of interacting of interacting objects. And uh, I assume only two body interactions. Yes? But of course, there are many uh, bodies, uh, I mean, but they interact through two body. Uh, on every pair of particles interact. Okay, so uh, yeah, actually, uh, in eighty four, in eighty four, Philip Anderson, the renowned uh, uh, physicist, uh, uh, Nobel laureate, proved proved. Uh, look at the uh, parentheses here, uh, the quotation mark, uh, proved that every interaction. Like uh, I described in a moment, this F of R, whatever, but every, every, has at least one periodic ground state configuration. So you put this uh, uh, atoms, let's say, point masses, okay, uh, and then assume any interaction between them, any, and uh, that, that, that there is always at least one periodic configuration of these particles, which, uh, 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 which minimize uh, the energy of the system. And he proved that. Uh, I uh, um, this is the, this is the first homework. We have a homework here, yes. And uh, I, I guess that uh, uh, to get the grade, you have to send it at a certain point to, to Professor Eva. No. Okay. So so <laughs> uh, so yeah. So this is the first homework then, or I would say uh, a park homework. No, park park homework. It's nice to work in the park. 
uh, I discover, uh, obviously, uh, the part to the left. Uh, uh, so uh, there is a proof. It's posted on my. It's posted on my uh, web page, and it's actually in one of this uh, this uh, this links. Uh, professor, uh, uh, send send you. So uh, so what is the homework problem? Uh, uh, it is to 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 to, uh, to see where is the loophole in this uh, in this uh, in this proof. Uh, don't be scary that this is physics. I mean, this proof is completely uh, uh, high school mathematics. Yes, it's just uh, reasoning. Yes, there's no assumption of helium or 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 anything like that. It's just uh, point masses, uh, energy, and optimization. You you minimize the energy. And, and the proof is that, it, that always within the, the, the structures which minimize the energy, there's also, always at least. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, there is at least one uh, uh, periodic. Okay. So lo look at the proof. Look at the proof. It's just one page. Maybe not even one page. All right. Yes. 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 He even assumed, I think, the uh, uh, short range. Short range. Uh, yes. Yes. So, uh, yeah, eighty-four. But unfortunately for him, fortunately for us, Dan Shekman, uh, physicist, uh, in eighty-two, eighth of April. Okay. In National Bureau of Standards in Washington, was observing rapidly soli so solidified, solidified uh, aluminium transition metal alloys, okay. and uh, he was looking uh, for the uh, uh, Fourier spectrum, actually for the diffraction pattern, which is the same as the, as the, as the Fourier spectrum going to momentum. Well, diffraction, this typical diffraction, just look uh, X-ray of the, you know, as we go for the uh, in the doctor, but uh, it's for the for the matter. Here and what you observe, this is uh, you know this is the this is the uh, uh, picture of this diffraction pattern, which uh, which won the Nobel Prize in Chemistry. So that's what we share with uh, I share with the previous talk. Uh, uh, strangely enough, uh, both these uh, Nobel prizes for for Onzager and and, and Schechner was in Chemistry. I, I, I I'm not I'm not sure why it should be in physics basically. Uh, but anyway, it's in chemistry. And what is it here? What's what's the problem with this? Uh, uh, what uh, with this spectrum here? The problem is here is tenfold symmetry. It has tenfold symmetry. Okay, if you rotate by tenfold by by, by, by um, uh, uh, three hundred sixty by ten, it, it will uh, it will it will coincide with itself. And now it is relatively easy exercise. Uh, uh, I should say for students. I mean you. Uh, this is not a homework. Uh, is that to prove to prove that no periodic structure, no periodic structure, can have this diffraction pattern, which is tenfold. The periodic structure of uh, fourfold, eightfold, and some other. But I'm not really sure about that. Now, but anyway, four, by, obviously, but not tenfold, not fifth or tenfold or fiftfold. Okay, mm -hmm. cannot, cannot have. So obviously, if this is not a mistake. It comes from the matter which is non-periodic, mm -hmm. but it was very difficult because it's against the dogma. It was against the dogma. So that guy Dan Shekman was fired immediately from the laboratory because he's crazy. <laughs> 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 uh, uh, you know, a little spouting uh, said at that time uh, that there are no quasi-crystals. You no, know, there was a term quasi-crystal. There are no quasi-crystals. There are only quasi scientists. <laughs> okay, so you know, the, you, you see the pressure, you know, for the young guy. You know? uh, so this is a really, uh, and, and you know, this is Nobel Prize here. Right? So this is really uh, advice to, to young people. You know, you, you 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 listen to authorities, but only with some reservation, you know? maybe with great reservation, right? and and be assertive and, and continue your path of you know whatever you think is important. Even even if ten fellows next to you say. That you are crazy. Uh, it's worth, you know, to uh, to go uh, beyond the mainstream. You know this saying in physics, right? There's no problem whether it's crazy or not. The problem is, is it crazy enough? Yes, right. Okay. So that's a great, great summary of that. And uh, 
uh, well, yeah, so uh, uh, now I can continue still uh, for a second. Uh, I'll go to more definitions now. Yeah, you, li you like definitions, right? No. Okay, you like definitions, as I said, but there, there, may, there might be some definitions. Uh, mm, like his gas models. Uh, and uh, at the same time, these are dynamical systems of finite type. I'll this, this, uh, uh, discuss this. Okay, well, so this, this is uh, this part which is sort of boring, but it's uh, definition like and uh, uh, introducing a, a, a notation. And be careful because uh, park problems follow. Before we go further, so you said that. In low temperature, everything is crystal, okay? Yeah. So, but crystal, you mean not necessarily a periodic one, yeah? Yeah. In, in front of, in, I mean, because uh, uh, the last guy, I mean, Schechtman, I was not sure. Danny Schechtman. Yes. That, that there might be non periodic structures. Yes, but that's, that's basically, yes, I agree. I always thought that crystals are periodic. Yes, exactly. So, the crystal problem was to prove that everything is periodic. Okay. And, and, and uh, because this is obviously the structures discovered by Nani Schekman are non periodic, they were called quasi crystals. But then, linguistically interesting enough, uh, the, the union of crystallography uh, said, okay, so now let's call crystals uh, things which have nice peaks in diffraction pattern. Oh, okay, so both Chris, both both <laughs> yes, so, and yeah, so we included, you know, we included just, you know, just okay. The, okay. right. So, I, I, so <laughs> it's, it's linguistics basically, and, and I, I think it's uh, it's it's a bad idea actually, but uh, because uh, it's uh, somehow okay. Anyway, so uh, let us introduce some uh, uh, no, uh, notations, and uh, and then as I said, be careful because uh, more park problems will follow uh, shortly. So there are n, type, n types of particles, okay? There are n types of particles. You can think two, if you wish, okay? Every side of ZD, you may think D equal two, if you wish. Uh, the, as I said, square regular lattice, okay? Uh, it's occupied by one particle, by one particle. So what is the set of all particle configurations? Well, now we are talking infinite now. now. So mathematics deals with infinity. So for a moment, I will then, then, then I will justify why we are interested in infinity because the work is finite. Yes, at least we believe. Uh, so uh, the set of all particle configurations is uh, n element set raised to the ZD power. Yes, at every side you have n possibilities. So we have that many possibilities, that many functions which assign to every uh, vertex. Uh, of the lattice, one of n particles, right? So we have this space. This space obviously is uh, uncountable, and there is nice topology on it. I will come. I will. I will, I will talk about this uh, in, in a moment. But we are dealing in finite sets. Also, uh, lambda is, is a finite set at Z D, and you have omega lambda is a finite configuration space. It's a finite configuration space. Okay, and so what is the interaction potential in general? These are family of functions indexed by a finite subset lambda. Okay, so we have this phi uh, from uh, omega lambda, phi lambda from omega lambda to L, just fi functions, yes, just functions. These are finite sets, these are functions on finite sets. Uh, these are interaction potentials. And oh, of course, so finite, we understand what is finite range, yes? If the particles are uh, up, far apart, uh, the interaction energy is zero. Okay, the interaction, there's uh, some finite range. And uh, translation invariant, you understand that without this notation. Yes, it's translation invariant, you have two particles right here, yes? And in a uh, move right now, it's far. And then, uh, then uh, there will be the same energy here between these two particles as here, yes? Translations invariance, translation invariance. There's no external field which uh, produces some uh, uh, non-periodicity. Everything is translation invariant, but the outcome will be not, okay? And uh, so the, what is the Hamiltonian, okay? The Hamiltonian is in a finite volume, you sum up all these uh, potentials uh, of finite range. 
Okay, so again, the Hamiltonian is a function from this mathematical point of view, uh, is, is a function from omega lambda to r. Yes, it says uh, basically what is the energy of any configuration contained in lambda. Okay. And now, uh, uh, well, the Ising model, which is uh, the famous one, we have this plus one, minus one, so two spin orientations. Anyway, two possibilities. And sigma i, sigma i of x, this is just xi. So this is the projection, what is in, on a particular side i, where i is in zd. And the Hamiltonian is written as, as follows. It's uh, summation uh, sigma i, sigma j. This is definition sigma i. So sigma i at the configuration x is just this particular xi, either plus one or minus one. And you have sigma i, sigma j with the minus sign and minus h, h is the magnetic field and the summation is sigma i. And everything is, of course, summation. These are finite summation because we understand we have a problem. Once we are dealing with the infinite lattice, we have a problem because the energy of the infinite system is in general infinite. But you'd like to minimize it. But there's a problem, yes? There's, there's a problem. So we'll, we'll deal with the problem. Uh, well, uh, ju just a short, uh, uh, before uh, the break, short uh, uh, statement about the topology on, on, on Omega. Uh, well, it's, it's usually asking my, uh, my master uh, defense uh, students, uh, if, okay, this is the famous triple, yes, Omega, Sigma field, and uh, and probability, and there's a question given just some months ago. Okay, so it's, uh, uh, you have no answer, yes? <laughs> no answer. Model Here's, huh? Mod model? Right. Yeah, but sure, yeah, but for particular one, it's just without, you know, this, this is a finite set, finite set. Uh, and, and tell me the the the, the except the trivial one and the, you know all subsets. Uh, it's usually it's difficult. I don't know why. Here's nice. Uh, it's it's nice uh, topology. Omega is, uh, is 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 uncountable. So we have to introduce uh, sigma field. And uh, so this is uh, the smallest top, the topology. The smallest topology that such that all projections the sigma i from omega to omega i are continuous with this two element set equivalent with the discrete topology. So you have the discrete topology in the finite set and all projections, the smallest topology, but all projections should be continuous. Well, uh, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a product topology. It's a, just a product topology, but it's just uh, you know, nicely phrased and uh, homework number two, one, number one. Characterize, so we have the omega with this topology. Think about it, what it really means, this topology. And the best way of uh, discovering what it what does it mean is to see to characterize well with the convergence. You have so you have a set omega with the topology, and so we can talk about the convergence of, co of configurations. So think uh, what what is really the the characterization of this? What does it mean that the sequence of configurations x n converges to x on omega? It gives you the, 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 the insight what is really this, uh, this topology. You, you, dis you will discover it. So I will not talk about this. You will discover it uh, uh, maybe even during the coffee break. Uh, so, so, yeah. So, as I said, we would like to minimize the energy of configurations. Uh, maybe the energy density, then, yes. Uh, so what is the energy density? You have to uh, f x, x is any uh, configuration on omega, and you take the Hamiltonian, it should be, it should be, uh, it should be, it, see if it, it works here, probably not. I oh, no, it doesn't. <laughs> okay, it doesn't matter. Uh, I forgot about x here, yes? So, the, so this is e of x, so it should be x on the, uh, Right hand side, the Hamiltonian evaluated at x. So it's, a ham it's the energy of the box. You divide by the size of the box and you take the box to infinity. And that's the energy, uh, energy uh, density. Yes. Uh, but I didn't, I didn't want to look at this. That's energy. So you might think, you might think that the right definition of the ground state configuration is that it minimizes the energy density. So energy density is at least well defined. I say uh, inferior for 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 for, 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 for any problems, 
so it's well defined. Well, but well defined is not enough. Yes, uh, it doesn't make sense. Okay, and that's that's uh, uh, you know so, sort of uh, outside mathematics question. <laughs> uh, yes, but look, look, we would like to have a uh, configurations which uh, we somehow uh, no ground state configuration. So let's take a configuration which is a ground state configuration, and then overturn uh, finitely many spins or whatever uh, change in change in finite. Uh, domain, change in finite domain, any way you wish, yes? The energy density is the same because uh, we divide by the size of the cube and take to the infinite. So, so the energy density is, is, is not perturbed by the, by, the, by the change on finite domains. Okay, so it will be again a ground state configuration yeah? because it has the same lowest energy density. But we don't like to call it ground state because it's excitation. It's a ground state. You excite it on finite, on finite uh, domains, but still. So this is a wrong definition. Yes. At least it's not uh, uh, for many other reasons. It's wrong. Uh, uh, so we'd like to make it local definition. Local definition. So what is local definition? Uh, we call it local excitation. As I said, we have x. And why is a local excitation? Why is a local excitation if it differs from uh, x on finite number of sites? It's excitation, yes? it's like an infinite configuration, just excited here and then, but only on a finite uh, domain, on a finite uh, region of Z2 or ZD. Okay, and then uh, take the what is the relative Hamiltonian? Relative Hamiltonian, if y is a local excitation of x. If y is a local excitation of x, then the relative Hamiltonian is defined as a uh, uh, difference between these uh, potentials uh, evaluated at y, evaluated at x, and the summation with is, with, is with respect to all finite subsets. All finite subsets. OK, so this, this, this uh, if the. So it looks, it looks dangerous, yes, because again, it's sort of infinite sum. But if, but it's not, because if the if the if the uh, uh, interaction is uh, is finite range, finite range, and y differs from x on the finite domain, obviously you will see that this is the finite sum. This is the finite sum. Uh, even if the interaction is it's the case, if the interaction is the case, you demand that this sum will be convergent. But that really means that interactions can be uh, seen as uh, uh, members of L1 space, basically. If you can command, it should be summable. It should be summable. So that this that sum uh, should convert. Okay. And then uh, final definition before the break is now X is a ground state configuration. Okay. X is a ground state for a potential, of course. V. If for every local excitation, why? Why is a local excitation of X? If for every local excitation, Y, the relative Hamiltonian is positive. So uh, you cannot lower the energy. Okay, the X is a ground state configuration. If you cannot lower the energy by a finite perturbation, it's a local definition. It's a completely local definition. Yes? Uh, and let me just uh, close this uh, part by exercises, by exercises, because it's good before the uh, coffee break or tea break. Uh, uh, and cake break. Uh, proof. This is a local definition. This is a local definition, yes? Proof that ground state configuration minimizes energy density, actually, because it's a, no, I'll give you a definition. It's a completely local one. It's not certain that actually it, it, it goes that way, that it actually minimizes the energy density. Uh, so, uh, so this is exercise number two. Exercise number three, and this is more involved, prove that every translation invariant finite range interaction has at least one ground state configuration. Well, there's a definition. And of course, all mathematicians are concerned only with two problems, yes? Uniqueness and existence. It's a sort of signal, but uh, <laughs> class classification. Uh, oh, 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 that's that's yes, that's that's good. That's good. 
That's good. So, uh, so proof that every translation variant finally has at least one grand state configuration. Actually, in the proof, you will use the compactness. Oh, I, 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 I haven't told you. This omega in this product topology is compact. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you. That's a Tihon of T. Yeah, T, exactly. T. It's compact. Yeah. And you really use, and you, are, you are using this compactness in many places. But it huh? But actually, it, it, it is here. Yeah. Uh, actually, this okay. And exercise number four, and I close. Uh, find the constructive one. Okay, this is the constructive one. Find all ground state configurations uh, in the ferromagnetic ising model. That's what I described actually with this external field h equal to zero in dimensions d equal one. That's a warm up. So you start with the warm up. It should you know it's good for health just to have a warm up before you go into serious exercise. Uh, in dimension d equal one and d equal two, so you have a, you have a model, you have a definition, uh, you have an exercise, so you know what to do and right now. To do it the that's right, and that's how I close right now. Okay. So, uh, are there any questions concerning this part? Maybe. Just grab grab the mic, guys. Huh? Well. Uh, one question about the local excitement, but if uh, X is a local, Y is a local excitement effect, does this local excitement form an equivalent duration? That would seem so. Yes, yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, so my question is about. Uh, I assume that what is to be true is true. Uh, is there some connection of this ground state configuration to the Nebel theorem regarding uh, the law conservations uh, generated by symmetry? By symmetry. Uh, well, I don't know what uh, you will, what you will mean. Uh, uh, <clears throat> Can it be derived from the but this is the, you, you, you refer to the conservation law, yes? Mm -hmm. uh, you you do not have the conservation of energy. Yes, we are looking at we have all possible uh, configurations, and we are looking for the configuration which has actually the minimal, uh, in some sense, the minimal uh, energy. So I don't know how to answer for a moment. Okay, okay. Rokesh, maybe you can discuss this. Uh, mm, well, it's not fine because I have not answered the question. <laughs> Anybody else? I have one more question. Go ahead. The original was formulated in the three dimension here. Uh, no. And Hilbert uh, was uh, what is aware of the situation uh, of this uh, two dimensional situation here. Yeah? He was not aware of any. Yes, you, you mean the stylings or? Uh, yes, yes. Well, this is uh, far, far. This is uh, way uh, in the future. Yes. Yes. And different example examples which appeared was in two dimensions or? In uh, actually, uh, it was in two. It was not due to the Robinson, but due to to Berger. But still, sixty one or something. So sixty years after, and he uh, constructed twenty thousand uh, tiles. Uh, with the desired property, uh, so you understand why I have not presented this uh, <laughs> number. Okay, I, I agree. Yeah, so yeah, I, I, I think it was phrased more uh, in a more uh, a mature, uh, uh, um, abstract way, this, uh, this, this, this problem, but actually this is sort of uh, uh, taking some part of this problem and make it uh, a popular one. That's, uh, in, in a sense, okay. 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 So okay. it's more—it's more—it's more elaborated. This I think in the second part of the problem is more elaborated, but uh, um, okay. is there any way to relate this problem to different dimensions? I, well, I yeah, it, 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 there are. Of course, if you solve two dimensions, it's easy to, to, to generate into three dimensions. Uh, sort of a stacking, uh, or you know. Uh, ah, sure. Yes. For example, there are some other more. Uh, Mm -hmm. More involved way, ways in three dimensions you do uh, then, then um, uh, 
it, it, it's not actually going down. It's, it's not that uh, uh, nice because it's a two-dimensional object, and uh, uh, you can rotate it. You can see it goes like that, but if you have a, a projected in the, in the two dimension, you lose it. That's why, in a sense, this three dimension is more uh, uh, is uh, easier. easier. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Anybody from Zoom? No, so we pause the recording right now. And let's resume at 12 and sharp. I pause. Okay. Lecture in progress, recording in progress. We resume and continue. Go ahead, you. Uh, so, uh, once you disprove the proof of, of Anderson, it's nice to have a direct uh, disproof uh, that is a counterexample. Okay? So, uh, one thing is to find a loophole in somebody's proof, and the other thing is to uh, provide a concrete uh, counterexample. Uh, so, we'll have a <clears throat> concrete uh, counterexample of a classical lattice gas model as defined uh, before the break, uh, such that uh, all uh, interactions are finite range on the nearest neighbor interactions. Uh, translation invariant, of course. Uh, nevertheless, there is only one, or I'm kind of the many, as we already know, uh, ground state uh, configurations. And the model will be based on Robinson tiling. So it is very uh, simple, straightforward uh, procedure. Uh, uh, which is a sort of a translation uh, from tiling uh, model to lattice gas model in the following way. We can think about tiles, the square-like tiles, as particles. So in the Robinson uh, example, there, were, uh, there are 56 uh, tiles. So you have 56 different types of particles. And then matching rules, uh, which tells you which tell you uh, uh, that two uh, tiles can be adjacent, uh, will translate into interactions in the following way: if two tiles do not match, so either are empty spaces left or some overlaps, uh, then. Uh, the interaction energy between two particles which correspond to these two tiles uh, is, is positive, say one. And if two tiles do match, then the interaction energy is zero, the lower one. So let's say we have zero one, okay? So then, uh, well, what will the ground state configuration? Now, uh, these are configurations to minimize the energy density, but uh, satisfy uh, the definition uh, which was uh, provided. Well, it's sort of easy to see that uh, the configuration, configurations which correspond to non periodic tidings, non periodic Robinson tidings, are ground state configurations. And on, yeah, because all, all uh, matching rules are satisfied. That is to say, all two-body interactions are zero. I mean, the energy of two-body interaction is zero because, uh, well, that, that's, that's the lowest possible, yes? Everything is satisfied. Uh, uh, the, the energy density is zero. And in fact, if you overturn anything, then you immediately uh, introduce some mismatches. Uh, so the energy uh, is, is, is up, okay? So that, that's almost, uh, that, that's the proof, yes? You may put maybe some other uh, short, uh, short sentences, but that's, that's the proof that the, these are ground state configurations. Uh, uh, of course, there are other ground state configurations, uh, but that uh, would follow, uh, you, will, you will learn that uh, if you uh, make the exercise. About the Eisen model, you see there, there are more, can be more, but at least this, okay, at least this, and um, and the 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 other ground state configurations 
uh, are actually are actually few. That is to say, maybe there are infinite number of them, but not uncountable number. Not uncountable number of them. Uh, yes. So forbidden patterns. Uh, forbidden patterns. Uh, this goes a little bit into the this dynamical system of finite type. These are forbidden patterns. What are the forbidden patterns? These are the uh, two uh, nearest neighbor uh, tiles which do not match. Okay, so these are forbidden patterns. And we assign positive energy to forbidden patterns. And the tilings are ground state configurations, and ground state configurations are, uh, uh, have, have zero energy. Okay. Now I would like to uh, higher a bit of temperature. Okay. So far, uh, we work at, at zero temperature, we minimize the energy. Uh, when you work at the positive temperature, and most uh, things happen at positive temperature, uh, then uh, we have to allow disruptions. Okay? Uh, matter is uh, like here in this room uh, uh, with the air, air is at certain temperature, the cosmic uh, uh, heat movements of, of molecules and everything is disrupted. So you do not expect that everything will be at the ground state. Uh, so we have to introduce uh, the probability. What is the probability that there are certain configurations actually arise at some temperature? Okay. So we switch from sort of deterministic systems into the uh, uh, probabilistic ones. We have to describe the all configurations by the probabilities to appear in the equilibrium state. We are talking all the time about the equilibrium statistical mechanics. So we have to introduce the probability. And uh, OK, there are many ways to uh, justify why, in particular, Gibbs measure, I will describe in a moment, uh, is, is the appropriate one. So what is it? We have uh, lambda uh, finite. And uh, we have a Hamiltonian, H lambda, as before. Uh, it's a finite volume. Okay? Everything is in finite volume, and here is here is here is the uh, the, the probability. It's it's described by the uh, probability of atoms. This is the discrete probability right now. Yes. This set is finite, so this uh, probability uh, space is finite. So the prob any probability measure is just a, a finite uh, number of numbers which sum up to one. That's it. That's, that's the whole probability. Set up, yes. So I describe this measure uh, just by saying uh, uh, what probability uh, does it uh, ascribe to atoms? Yes, because they're on the atoms. And, and what is it? It's uh, the exponent of uh, minus beta. Beta is actually one over the temperature, one over the temperature. Uh, H lambda, that's in the numerator. And in the denominator, we have just the normalization constant, yes, which is supposed to be the probability. And this normalization constant is just sum up with respect to all configurations in omega lambda. Again, finite sums, finite sums. Uh, this e to the minus beta h h h lambda. So this is it's called a finite volume Gibbs state or a Gibbs measure. In physicist uh, circles, it's called grand grand canonical ensemble. Okay. Uh, so it penalizes, as we see, it penalizes uh, configurations with high energy. Yes, because uh, higher the energy, lower the probability in an exponential way, very strong, okay? And this beta is the parameter, is the temperature. Uh, uh, sorry, it's one over the temperature. And it's, uh, it's an exercise to prove that if uh, it's one over t, uh, and if you take the t to zero, take the limit uh, of measures, but in a finite space, so this really is just a point wise, yes, on every, on every atom. If you take the limit of measures, as T temperature goes to zero, uh, you, uh, the, the, this probability will be supported by ground state configurations, which is sort of easy to see because it penalizes the high energy. But if temperature goes to zero, it penalizes whatever the energy uh, beyond uh, uh, the, the ground state energy. So it's a relatively a simple uh, exercise in, in this uh, particular simple setup. Uh, Z lambda is called a, a statistical sum. Uh, now, one might ask, 
why this probability measure? Yes, I mean this is physics. I mean just you know, as mathematicians, uh, we have freedom. Yes, complete freedom. That's why we are here. Uh, physicists they do not have freedom. Yes, because they have to look at the reality. Uh, they may think some crazy ideas, but uh, you know, of course. But you know, there's a reality. If they don't relate to the reality. Uh, some people don't call them physics. Okay, so uh, so now why this this uh, this uh, uh, why this uh, probability measure? Well, there are many many justifications. I will mention one. Uh, of course, the best one is uh, provided by Richard Feynman. He said, "Well, this is the assumption we work from it." Okay, but there are many many justifications again in terms of variation of principles. In terms of variation of principles. In terms of minimization, something actually means minimization of the energy. Uh, okay, all right, it's right here. Okay, so that has a short justification why this exponential is so important. Why this is a Boltzmann factor sometimes it's called or Gibbs Gibbs measure, uh, as I said. Uh, why why it pops up everywhere in physics? Uh, well, uh, let's let M very short uh, justification here. Let m lambda be the set of all probability measures on omega lambda. Again, we're talking about the finite probability spaces. So everything is very elementary, okay? Accessible to you know, probability one students. I mean, probability one as a, as a subject. Uh, let m lambda be the set of all probability measures on omega lambda, and let rho uh, be any measure. Yes, we define the entropy. I will be quick here, but uh, the entropy I think is a minus sign here. Should be uh, it's 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 uh, uh, it's it's a expected value with respect to this row of logarithm of row. It's a simple uh, almost school definition. It's like uh, uh, summing uh, minus pi logarithm pi and sum with respect to all possibilities. Yes, it's entropy with the minus sign. And now we have the uh, free energy uh, free energy function. Now, so it's the free energy function. In this particular measure, it's it's a expected value of the Hamiltonian. Well, Hamiltonian now is a random variable. Yes, it's a function from omega lambda to r. It's it's a random it's a random uh, variable, and we are thinking about the expected value of the random variable with respect to this measure rho. So, uh, free energy function now is a function on measures. Is the expected value of the Hamiltonian plus the temperature. Uh, times the expected value of this logarithm of rho. Okay, it's a free energy me measure uh, function. It's called pressure in physics. Okay, mm -hmm. sure. Uh, okay, uh, rho is a fun, you no, know, it's a finite probability space. I mean, it's simple. Rho is a probability measure, but it's really a function on omega, it's on atoms. Uh, okay, so, so on, on atoms. Yeah, probability, yeah, because it's a finite. We don't we do not talk about this you know, uh, uh, in this uh, sigma algebra. Yeah, so it's a function. Yeah, yeah. So you take a logarithm of the function. Uh, of course, it's not uh, zero. Uh, so everything has a positive probability. Okay, so just to avoid the problem. Yeah, yeah. That's. <laughs> Everything has its uh, analog in infinite spaces, uh, and it's much harder. Yes, I, what I'm talking right now is finite spaces, but then you can pass to the infinite, and then you have to talk about uh, all these problems pop up, of course. So the proposition or the theorem here is that this uh, Gibbs state, as as defined here, yes, as defined here, as this exponential, actually minimizes the free energy. The free energy is a function on measures. Yes. Free energy is the functional measure, so it's the expected value of the Hamiltonian plus uh, minus uh, temperature times the entropy, minus temperature times the entropy. So it's, it's a functional on the raw. And uh, uh, this, uh, uh, this keep state uh, minimizes, minimizes this uh, free energy functional. So again, it's a sort of uh, justification terms that uh, we see the, uh, 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 the <coughs> equilibrium states equilibrium states uh, as uh, as ones which minimize something the free energy okay and you see that the, the exponential measures e to the minus beta hamiltonian actually 
do uh, minimize free energy. Uh, well, this is sort of uh, elementary, uh, a little bit involved, but very elementary proof. Because uh, again, this is finite probability, finite probability space. It's, it's, it's really, it uses Jensen inequality uh, of logarithm, basically. <laughs> And you can you, you can prove that it's, it's not very involved, well, but it, it's a fun to prove this. Okay, so that's that's a short justification why Gibbs measures are so important in statistical physics. Yeah, as I said, uh, you have to to pass to the infinity. Why? Uh, that is so-called uh, thermodynamic uh, thermodynamic uh, limit. Uh, that is to say, with this uh, finite set, you go to the infinity, and we really uh discuss infinite systems why uh i talk about this uh, gibbs uh, states they describe the macroscopic uh, uh, behavior in equilibrium of many interacting particles and uh, they also uh, supposed to describe phase transitions uh, phase transitions like uh, in winter we have liquid uh, uh, uh water in liquid phase and in ice phase, okay. This is these are the same interactions, the same matter, same 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 uh, same Hamiltonian at, at certain temperature, you know, zero zero and certain uh, pressure, they coexist. Ice and water, liquid water coexist. And in this uh, in this in the setup, these two phases are are described are described by two Gibbs states. Obviously, there is different probability of finding particles in water, liquid water, and different in, in ice. You know, in ice, are, it's, a it's a crystal. So it's different probability. Yes? So for the same Hamiltonian, the same temperature, and other parameters of the model, you like to have two Gibbs states describing two phases of the matter which coexist. This is the typical example of, of phase transition. Yes. Uh, but if you are in a finite system, there's only one I just described. Yes, and then you have a Markov chains, dynamics, there's only one stationary state, yes, uh, and, and so on. Yes. So you have to pass to the uh, infinite system. Once you pass to the infinite system, things are much more involved, of course. Uh, but no, nevertheless, only then you can describe phase transitions. Only then there are some sing some singularities at here. A bunch of exponent exponents here, so no no singularities. Everything's perfect, it's fine, it's unique. Yeah. When you'd like to describe phase transitions, I said you have to have some singularities. You have to pass to the to the infinity, and then certain things like uh, like this free energy. So for example, this you have this free energy in the limit. You take the free energy for the finite system, divide by lambda, take lambda to infinity, and such thing might not be differentiable, for example, with respect to temperature. Yes, if once you pass to the infinite limit, many things can happen. And hopefully you will have some non-singularities. For example, uh, the, 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 this F will not be uh, differentiable. So these are infinite volume with measures. Uh, well, okay, I will not talk about this. Uh, this is, you know, Gibbs measures are limits uh, as you take these measures, uh, this finite the volume Gibbs measures as lambda goes to infinity in a certain sense and then these measures will converge in a week we start convergence to the to the real real measures on the real infinite omega with this topology i described before but uh, this will not play a role in this talk but i just said that uh, you have to go before beyond finite systems uh, to have uh, interesting physics and mathematics as well. Passing to the limit with uh, certain boundary conditions, and there may not be limits, but some accumulation points because there's no limit because there will be many deep states, say two. So the limit does not exist, but uh, things like that. Yeah. Like the limit is on half of the right? huh? Like the limit is on half of the policy. Yeah. Yes, yes, exactly. Yes, not the point, not at the point. Yes, it will be. Normalized, yes, probably the measure, normalized. Yes, yes, these are the, the, the normal, normalized measures. 
probably measures, yes, in, in the limit, yes. Uh, but this limit is not trivial. Yes, it's, it's really uh, quite, quite, quite involved how we do this, all these thermodynamic limits going with the finite lambda to infinity. So that's really where the, uh, where the fun begins. Mm. Okay, so, yeah. Uh, okay, so, uh, yes, so basically you like to prove this for the quasi crystal I just mentioned here because it's quite involved. You like to have, okay, so I think there's some slides, but it's really, I will describe what it is. You have slides uh, at your disposal. What, what is really, really is that uh, you have a non periodic ground state, okay, ground state configurations, and you higher the temperature, and then you are looking for the uh, minimum of the free energy. So, what you really do, you construct the Gibbs states, and you have to see if this Gibbs state at, at the non zero, maybe may very low, but nevertheless, non zero temperature are. are are uh, perturbations, small perturbations of the of these configurations. So we basically see this configuration with small problems here and then fluctuations, which nevertheless do not disturb non-periodic order. Okay, so uh, you'd like to see the 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 the, the deep state. Which, if you look at the end, every point, it really the, you see the ground state with the probability one minus epsilon of epsilon very small. Okay, so that's that's basically you construct the deep state, which is in a certain cell, small perturbation, small perturbation of the ground state configuration, or rather ground. Uh, as I said, there are many many ground state configurations. But they all look the same. Uh, I should have mentioned this. Uh, that is to say, all these ground state configurations look the same. So they are in the support of one translation invariant measure, which is called ground state, ground state measure. Uh, so then there will be uh, y equal to x. So not, not uh, you refer to a uh, slide here? Uh, uh, sorry, it should be equal. Okay, okay. Yes. Uh, with uh, the probability y zero should be the same as x. The same. Sorry, this should not be uh, inequality. Yes. Uh, uh, yes. Not equal. It should be uh, smaller than epsilon. Thank you. It's a mistake here. You would like to yes. You would like to y be uh, yes. Look like X. Thank you very much. Yes, I haven't noticed this here. Uh, okay. Yeah. So that's what we like to see. I mean, this is basically this this inequality here. That if you look at zero, zero is any any side. Yes. Uh, basically, you see you see the ground state with the very uh, large probability. Uh, this is uh, not proven. This is the, this is the goal. Uh, well, uh, some result very very briefly. For example, these are all times, as I said. Uh, there's a decreasing uh, sequence of temperatures. You can prove this uh, for certain model. There is a decreasing sequence of temperatures, Tn, such that if T is smaller than Tn, then there exists a Gibbs state with a period at least 6 to the n in both directions. This is in play. So basically, if the temperature is small enough, the period of this Gibbs state exceeds the diameter of the universe. So some people might say, well, we cannot see it anyway. Yeah? So maybe that's good enough. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, we would like to see this infinity. Yes, and we really see that at certain temperature, we really see the whole infinite uh, period, in a sense. Yes, non periodic Gibbs state. Okay, so it's, it's, uh, well, for mathematicians, uh, I don't have to convince yes, that you have, have this theorem. Uh, uh, but I think it's important also from, from the uh, physics point of view that you really have at uh, a non uh, uh, zero temperature uh, deep states which have 
which do not have order. It do not have period, non-periodic deep states. Okay. Okay. Uh, for uh, for uh, longer range interaction, there are some. Uh, there are some. As I said, this theorem is for the nearest neighbor interactions, and there are of course uh, many uh, results for systems with infinite range interactions, maybe decaying exponentially, uh, maybe just summable. So you can do many other things for such for such uh, interactions, either e even in two dimensions. Okay, let me skip that. Systems of finite type. All right, so that's that's a little bit uh, other way of looking at this. In the following way, that uh, well, uh, omega is as before. Let X be a Robinson tiling. Uh, take the orbit. Take any Robinson tiling. Take the orbit under the translation. The translation. Uh, with respect to all, all translations in Z2, as we are in Z2 now, and, and close it in the topology I have described, close it. And this, this is R, some set, uncountable set. You already know that this is uncountable, so there are uncountably many non-periodic uh, ground state configurations or non-periodic times. And uh, it's easy to see that there is unique, uh, as you see, this is uh, for this particular example, that there is a unique translation invariant measure, translation invariant measure, probability measure, uh, uh, which has this R as its support, which can be computed very uh, directly. You start with this X, take the measure which is uh, just the delta measure concentrated on this x then you translate it by t alpha uh, and sum it with respect to uh, alpha's vectors in lambda and first divide by the sizes divide by the size of lambda to make it uh, a probability measure yes so these are just a bunch of deltas chronicle deltas yes on these atoms and you have more and more atoms because you take uh, uh, more and more translations and take the limit uh, of these measures as lambda goes to Z2 in a appropriate way, of course, in a appropriate way. And that's the measure on the R. That's a translation variant measure, uh, which has R uh, in its support. Okay. Yes, I'm confused by this formula from the R. You have a symbol. Where? Delta, you? De yeah. Delta T A X. Well, uh, sorry, this should supposed to be T A T A of X. So you have X. Okay. Yeah. This is this lower subscript. Sorry. Uh, this, this is this is the subscript of delta. Yes. You have X translated by T A and put it delta. Yeah. yeah sorry. Yes. So this this should be upper. Yes. Uh, so this is a dynamical system of finite type. You have uh, a set. We have a, a translation, some uh, operator, yes, uh, and then you have an invariant measure. And then you have an invariant measure. And you are an invariant measure under this uh, flow in this phase T. So these are called uh, the Y of sta finite type, because this R is defined by finite number of forbidden patterns. You just define uh, forbidden patterns and then defines uniquely, and then defines uniquely. Uh, this, this this set R, so the set R in the in the case of Robinson tiling is defined by saying well two ties which do not match do not appear in the configurations which are in the support of R, and that's uniquely characterizes the measure. The measure mu R is uniquely characterized by the certain finite finite uh, patterns. Of course, this, there are many of the patterns because we move uh, here, but. Uh, they're all, always uh, of finite size, so called finite uh, type uh, dynamical, uh, of course, symbolic dynamical systems of finite type. Okay, and, uh, uh, and the, the measure is called uniquely algorithmic measure. I just skip on that. And uh, but this is one more important thing, which is very important in this, is that if you take any Robinson tiling, think any. Uh, Lambda, of course, it's a subset not it belongs to Z2. It's a subset of Z2. It's a finite set. It's a finite set. And P is boundary. 
and n r is the number of appearances of, of this finite path. This is just finite path. And you take a lambda right here and count the number of patterns in X, okay? But you start with X, number of patterns omega, and divided by lambda. Of course, when you take lambda to infinity, it goes to the frequency of that pattern. And, it's, and in fact, in all Robinson tilings, this is the same frequency, okay? So they're indistinguishable. All these Robinson tilings are indistinguishable. Uh, when you look at finite domain, they all look the same. If you look at the finite domain. This is really the statement that this is uniquely ergodic measure. And uh, this limit is actually uniform where you start. But more, and that goes beyond this uh, dynamical system of finite time. We would like to have more. We would like to, to see how fast is this convergence, this arrow, how fast it is, in a sense. So the Open question here is, does there exist a non-periodic system like Robinson tiling, for example, of, of finite type, again, of finite times, so, uh, only matching rules are of nearest neighbors, such that the following strict boundary uh, condition is satisfied. If you look at the number, actually, of these patterns in R and subtract the, the, uh, the frequency multiplied by lambda, by the volume, that's after the boundary. So this is smaller than some uh, constant which depends only, only on the pattern multiplied by the boundary. Okay, so that's uh, that's that's not true for the Robinson, for example, which is a small exercise, maybe not small, maybe bigger. Uh, the, the the frequency of patterns is well defined. But the fluctuations are not up to the boundary. Maybe logger, okay, it's not maybe a boundary time, okay, it's not up to the boundary. How do we understand the boundary? I have a problem. Length, length. Length. Length, okay. sorry, length. P is the uh, is boundary. P is the length of the boundary. Okay, that's my question. Okay, P is the length. Thank you. P is the length of the boundary. Okay. So the fluctuation, we demanded these fluctuations, the uh, actual number minus the uh, true frequency multiplied by the volume, yes, that should be, uh, that should be uh, smaller than some constant, depending only on the arrangement, times the, times the, uh, times the length of the boundary. But that, that's not true for zero Robinson time, that's not true. It's, 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 uh, this, this P is multiplied still by logarithm P, mm -hmm. which is okay because you divide logarithm P P times the, 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 the volume, it will go to zero. That's all, all you demand for the frequency to be well defined. So that's uh, that's uh, condition, strict boundary condition, as I call it, uh, is important for the stability set of this uh, of these uh, structures. Okay. So I, I think I have 15 minutes maybe, or? I think. Should or should I now? stop? Yeah, I think it should be. You should stop all this now. Okay, so I'll just uh, outline the uh, ma major problem. Okay, so uh, uh, so we talk about two dimensions. There is a big story about one dimension, one dimensional product systems. Uh, there is important theorem here. Yes, for one dimensional periodical system on periodic systems. Every one dimensional lattice gas model with finite range interactions has at least one periodic ground state configuration. Mm -hmm. So we cannot have systems with finite range interactions or system of finite type, which will be non-periodic. That's, 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 that's the theorem. And uh, so what we can do? If, if you are in one dimension. Uh, that's what you mentioned when we talked about the uh, Yes. Exactly. So, uh, so you would like to discuss non periodicity in one dimension. We have to include interactions of infinite range, 
That's 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 the uh, conclusion from the theorem. Infinite range, maybe decay exponentially very fast, but nevertheless infinite infinite range. Okay, and I don't have time to talk about this infinite ranges. Uh, so uh, on the other hand, I don't like to make this uh, subconscious uh, quick uh, uh, slides <laughs> uh, sequences, which are very subliminal. Yes. <laughs> uh, anyway. Uh, I, I, I will maybe uh, do it like this. Oh, no, but yeah, it's okay, because then I can go without uh, uh, making, I can talk about two more sequences. Uh, I can talk about characterization of two more sequences. Uh, so this is a plan for the future. Yeah. Uh, this is not a system of finite type, but uh, the, the, the goal is to make the, the infinite type as small as possible. How to characterize non-periodic sequences by a minimal set of requirements. Minimal set of requirements. Maybe only just two bodies or four bodies. But of course, it has to be at infinite, yes? Because we know that it should be of infinite type. But nevertheless, you know, there are many infinities, as we all know in mathematics. Yes? So you'd like to make this uh, characterization as simple as possible. Well, here's one of the two more sequences are characterized uh, in four body in four bodies in four body patterns fibonacci sequences uh, are characterized by two body patterns and uh, this, this, so these are so this is already a recent work uh, after i just uh, come, came back to to what i've done uh, in, for example the the, the recent uh, uh, paper with uh, van enter and henna Koivusalo. Uh, this is the construction of non frustrated Hamiltonian Fibonacci sequences and all in ground states, but only two body interactions. Uh, and then stability. So, this is summary. Okay, so I'm on the right track. This is summary. So, uh, stability of non periodic structures, non periodic tilings. Uh, what are the programs or goals? Yes, I have not talked about much about it, but zero temperature stability. Let mu be a unique non periodic ground state. Yes. And then uh, question, is new a ground state for the perturbation? H prime is equal H plus epsilon and for any finite range, range interaction, epsilon double, uh, epsilon of double, uh, double uh, commas and a sufficiently small epsilon. So you have a Hamiltonian, which has a Robinson tiling, for example, as the only ground state measure, yes? And then you perturb a little bit, Hamiltonian. In certain space, maybe in Euclidean space, whatever, certain perturbation, yes? Small. Does it stay, this ground state, or goes away? So in the Robinson tiling, the, 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 the theorem is that it goes away. That's mean you get periodic ones and stuff. Yes? And that's why you need the strict uh, condition. For example, exactly. Exactly. So you can prove if you have the strict boundary condition, it will stay. But the Robinson tiling does not satisfy us. Okay, that's uh, so. That's the zero temperature stability. I'm looking that this should not should be some sort of generic in sense. And it's not just the point. There are many ways of genericity. We, we may talk about the bare category. We may talk about just Euclidean balls or measures, some sort of genericity. Okay, and the second one is low temperature stability. Does H have a non-periodic Gibbs state, which is a small perturbation of mu at low temperature? You, you perturb not by the Interaction you perturb by the temperature. So this is the last slide, I believe. So that's the fundamental open problem, uh, which is open for for many years. It's does there exist a non-periodic Gibbs measure, basically, which is a small temperature perturbation that can be quantified, of course, what it means, uh, of non-periodic ground state of a lattice gas model with translation variant finite range interactions. Okay, so that's 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 open for many years, and that's. Uh, uh, what drives my uh, research recently? This this open problem. So thank you very much for your attention. Of course, special thanks to organizers for invitation and also for uh, NCN Grant uh, Harmonia Mathematical Models of Quasi Crystals. That's thank you. Okay, very much. thank you, Yasek, for <laughs> Now we are a little bit over time, but I think we shouldn't shy away from some nice questions, if any. Well, stupid questions can be nice. I, I came up with a list to 
plastic. So uh, all that uh, our n is uh, the number of particles is equal to two. So we have the set zero one, and then we take zero one to the power d to the e. Okay. So one can do this phase of the product of two point set in particular a, a group. Zero one is a group. Yes. D group. Yes. And this is finite, so this is compact. You take a product of compact group, which is again a compact group. Yes. So this has a hard measure. So yes. is there any interest in uh, considering, considering hard measure? I don't know, it's not, sorry, it's not, not hard measure, but uh, this uh, theory is from the point of hard measure. Well, yes, from J. Yes. Uh, so, <clears throat> yes, uh, you mentioned the group. Mm -hmm. Well, so uh, a little bit in this direction, that's exactly my uh, PhD thesis, uh, which was uh, on, on, on the algebraic approach to this, to this uh, and exactly that you look at this as a, as a group. And uh, in fact, the classification of Gibbs measures is concerned with such modules uh, involving these groups. And this doesn't answer your question, but uh, yes, there's a, a, a need for ferromagnetic Ising model, not for the quasi-crystal. For ferromagnetic Ising model, there's a, a, there is a, a nice and very uh, rich algebraic structure, uh, which you can use uh, to classify all Gibbs states uh, uh, for ferromagnetic Ising model. And the hard measure is involved there, yes. So, Yes, yes, but uh, that was uh, very specific to ferromagnetic Ising Ising model. Yes. Uh, maybe not to ferromagnetic Ising model, but just a setup you just described. At every at every at every uh, lattice site, you have a group, a finite finite group. Yes, and then the ferromagnetic means that if you, if if you take the Fourier over this group, yes, you have also. Uh, that's why it was in this Ising model is minus. Uh, H. So this, in this case, it, 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 this, 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 this Fourier should have all, all, only negative coefficients. Okay, and that that's the general description of the, of the ferromagnetic in this uh, group uh, in this group context. It's a, a, every abelian group you can you can you can do that. Yes, and uh, there is a, a very rich algebraic st structure uh, using uh, you, you can decompose modules over of this group and uh, to characterize all all. All, all uh, Gibbs states. Uh, unfortunately, it's very specific yes, uh, to this particular uh, type type of model. So to use it for, uh, yeah, that would be nice to have some structure, uh, maybe periodic uh, for for the Robinson types. You, you see this uh, the feel of the periodic numbers of two, yes, uh, and uh, to use the algebraic uh, not existent yet uh, sort of approach. Uh, to answer these questions, yes. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? So I have, I have another uh, perhaps stupid question, but it's, it's more on the basis of that. I was playing with Isaac and the next one was uh, algorithmically, and uh, the very generic configurations that we use it uh, some type of formula. Mm -hmm. Special version. In your talk, you know what they are doing? Okay, so, so, so the important thing is that uh, they don't have a stop condition. So, so the stop condition is the configuration is not changing too much, and eventually they stop. So, in your talk, I saw, I saw a, a few conditions about the material that may actually serve as a stop condition for other types of algorithms, for the thing that's the old option. So, to, to use it actually to quantify if uh, the algorithm is already. Well, yes, I mean, uh, for this type of uh, statistical mechanics models, as you said, uh, you may generate uh, or uh, discover or uh, <coughs> look at uh, ground states by using uh, the Monte Carlo, Monte Carlo algorithm. Yes. Uh, and <coughs> so that's, uh, that's, that's going to be done, done uh, for uh, Ising model that is known, it's just uh, the uh, flip the spins uh, using exactly this uh, Boltzmann, uh, Boltzmann, uh, Boltzmann factor, and uh, and you really discover, as you said, there's no stop because it never 
it never converges on, on, on the computer. But for the non-periodicity, it's, it's much harder because uh, you, you never see this uh, this uh, uh, non-periodicity, non for example. Yes, uh, you may see some uh, longer periods, of course, uh, when we uh, lower the temperature, for example, but uh, to see the whole non-periodic order, you have to wait uh, a little bit farther, I'm afraid. So my, my only question was, well, this is a periodic, so like five hours. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's yeah. yeah, but I mean, to find ground states, it's, it's, it's a hard problem. It's, 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 a, it's a very hard problem. So yeah, if, you, if, if I give you a Hamiltonian, you can finite range on lattice, a uh, little bit uh, modified Ising model, uh, there would be uh, next to impossible to find the ground state configuration just looking at them, yes? unless uh, unless they are of such form that they uh, minimize all the interaction at the same time. So you're looking, uh, you you can can discover that they uh, really uh, minimize. But otherwise, it's a it's a completely it, it's a very hard problem to find uh, ground state configurations for for the Hamiltonian. So that's why this metropolis. Uh, Arguments, I mean, uh, are, are helpful. Okay, anybody else? Yeah, I got one more. Sure. So, the theory of Banach spaces uh, is uh, having pressure to encounter the space which is uh, non separable in the case of Banach spaces, but it's very exceptional for the Hilbert theory. But there is one exception, and this is the space of uh, the so called almost periodic function. Mm -hmm. I wonder whether is there any connection with this theory of quasi free power? Well, so in other words, is there any appearance of, of uh, this non separable figure space in this? Well, not that I am aware of, but this, uh, you mentioned this uh, almost periodic functions, yes? Uh, I mean, this uh, some, some uh, also definition of non periodicity, yes? But it is, uh, I think, very weak for the point of view of, of this one. Yes. Uh, I don't know. No, but I, don't, I just just to make short answer to your question, I don't know yes, uh, about any uh, connections here. Okay. Anybody else? Let's ask the Zoom folks. Anyone on Zoom would like to still ask a question? Oh, wait, we have something in the chat. It's thank you, many thanks, thank you. All right. Thank you. So uh, in this case, let's thank Yatsi again for his beautiful talk. Thank you. And uh, well, we'll resume after lunch, which is at 1500 hours. And let me tell you that uh, Agnieszka's talk is already online on YouTube. You can watch it. And the attack talk will be shortly. No, no it is online. It is online. I know. In your, no, your talk. Yes. We, we haven't finished recording it, so it cannot be online. Oh, okay, you mean. You, you know. But Agnieszka's talk yeah. is also on YouTube, and yours will be short. So see you after lunch. Thank you. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.